It's okay if you're a Muslim, a Christian, or a Jew. It's okay if you're agnostic and you don't know what to do. An all-inclusive celebration, no contractual obligation. Happy Christmas, a Kwanzaa to you. Welcome to Simply Robotics, the podcast, a podcast exploring the animation industry one episode at a time. I'm your host, Monique. You can find me on all social media platforms at Simply Robotics, S-I-M-P-L-Y-R-O-B-O-T-I-X. When listening to the show, use the hashtag Simply Robotics Pod to join in the conversation. Welcome back. We are on day 11 of Chris Mahana Kawanzika. Today, we're going to be talking about the 2004 film titled The Polar Express, directed by Robert Z- Zekamix, um, and produced by Castle Rock Entertainment, which is not an animation studio. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can pause the episode right here, go to the episode notes, watch the trailer, and then come back and we can keep it moving. If you need a little bit of a refresher, you can do the same thing. So first up, I have the synopsis from the Warner Brothers YouTube channel. Warner Brothers was a distribution company. That's why you see the Warner Brothers logo when you like start watching the film. Anywho, they say when a doubting young boy takes an extraordinary train ride to the North Pole, he embarks on a journey of self-discovery that shows him that the wonder of life never fades for those who believe. IMDB says, on Christmas Eve, a young boy embarks on a magical adventure to the North Pole on the Polar Express while learning about friendship, bravery, and the spirit of Christmas. I have seen this before. Came out in 2004. I was in high school. So I'm pretty sure by the end of high school, I saw it when it came TV or something like that. I know I did not see this in theaters. I saw this at someone's house. If not, yeah, I definitely saw this at someone's house, if not my own house. (laughs) My first impression was that it looked very strange. And that I felt like I was supposed to like this. I still think it looks very strange and that I'm supposed to really like this thing and enjoy this thing. As far as it holding up, it kind of holds up because it's still being played on TV every holiday season. And it doesn't really look that outdated. And that's about all I can say about does it hold up. (laughs) Running through the characters... (laughs) when I went to look up the characters names because I was like I don't really remember them saying the characters names and when I looked at the credits that's because most of them have no names they seem to have their like production file names as the actual credit name so for instance we have hero boy he is the main (laughs) boy child that you know was starting to lose faith in Santa Claus if you will and he's the one that he's kind of like timid or like reserved or shy what have you and the story for the most part centers around him there's hero girl she's a black girl cute nightgown and she's super courageous and it's like she helps hero boy to be like you know, a bit more like her and a bit more of like a leader. There's a conductor, which is an easy title for a character because that's also his occupation as far as this movie is concerned. And he's voiced by Tom Hanks. I think that was like the real selling point of this thing. It's like Tom Hanks is is his voice acting in the Polar Express. And I was always like, okay, and this movie looks kind of (laughs) weird. So there's also another character. He's called Know It All. And I was just like, they really could just opened up like a baby book or something and given these characters some names. Know It All, it sounds like, again, the file name for it. And that character is exactly what it sounds like he sounds like a snitch he's super annoying his 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 voice is very very nasaled and I'm like I don't just less amount of screen time that this character gets the better for my ears (laughs) the next character he's called lonely boy they actually do say his name and I feel like his name is Billy but as far as credits are concerned they refer to him as lonely boy he is very hesitant not really sure what he wants to do doesn't completely believe in Christmas but doesn't completely not believe in Christmas yes his character is Billy Billy the lonely boy and his hesitation causes hero boy and hero girl to like get into a lot of stuff that they probably wouldn't have gotten into if lonely boy could have been a bit more secure in his decisions whichever ones he was making but been secure in that and then there's this character this is what they say in the credits characters called hobo 
And I was like, man, that's actually, I think, a little bit rude, (laughs) but that's who he is. Visual style, this film is hyper-realistic. It's similar to games such as like Call of Duty or Red Dead Red Dead Redemption, um, or you can think of like your basketball, uh, 2K or Madden, you know, where you have these human characters and they do all this work to make them look as human as possible, but they will never look like humans. We see human faces every day, all the time. And that's kind of what bothers me with films that take this approach is like, we're so used to seeing human faces that no matter what you do to make something look as real as possible, it's always going to look off to the eye because the eye knows what's real. So I think you're better off just making a stylistic decision and pushing that than trying to you know, attained like reality. The elves, the elves are very creepy <laughs> looking in this thing. They're, they're not like por- proportioned like little people. They are really just like humans that are just scaled down to be shorter than children, super shorter than children. And their faces, they have like these adult man and like old man faces and they don't look fun and they just look creepy and weird. And I'm like, Is this really supposed to appeal to children? Because if so, this is creeping me out. Like as an adult, I just, I don't get it. The animation style for this film is motion capture. Heavy, heavy, heavy motion capture. If you're not familiar with motion capture, that's usually when people are like in the black suits and they have these little white dots on them. Um, There's also like facial capture, which is when they put the white dots on their face so that they can see like the muscle movements and the expressions that's being made. And this movie was highly centered on motion capture and I think that really hindered it a lot. I know for a fact, I just know this, I actually in my senior year of college got well, my my junior and senior year of college got really into motion capture. And that's something I've said on previous episodes that I actually wanted to work in professionally, you know, doing motion capture and cleaning up motion capture and what have, what have you. And I was considering moving from instead of animated films and stuff like that, but moving into video games so I can do that sort of stuff. So I know that this film, they cleaned up the motion caption data so that it looked so smooth and it looked good. However, still, they didn't really have artistic animators to come back in and make the movements look a bit more like, hmm. still, I was just want to say a bit more fun, a bit more loose. Like everything for me, all the movements were very like stiff and, and robotic. And I think that's because they were motion captured without another pass of just like animation. Like the thing that makes animation cool is because it's not like real it's not live it's not constricted to the realities of like being in the human world you can stretch characters you can stretch things and you can like you know inflate and you can really push expressions and body movements and you know how uh joints bend and all sorts of things like that so when you confine yourself to having to be like realistic I think that's where you fall short so take for instance like into the spider-verse that's um animated movie with human characters so they have to move like humans but if you go back and watch maybe some of the behind the scenes you can see how they like push and stretch some of the poses and stuff like that and facial expressions so that it ended up being a bit more like charming and appealing to the eye and I think that's where this movie lacks a lot a lot also what was weird was the lip syncing and and a lot of the mouth and I found myself especially whenever someone was talking and they did kind of like a close-up and were focusing on their face I'm just looking at their mouth and there's something weird going on there so it almost seems like their mouth doesn't have enough depth to it like maybe they the actual mouth needed to be a bit darker so that it looked like their throat wasn't you know right up behind their front teeth because there was too much light in their mouth which which just made me feel like there I don't know what's going on in there but something is not right and I'm pretty sure that has to do with on the more technical aspect the 3d modeling for it that whoever was sculpting the characters maybe didn't put but and also that could just be fixed like I said with just painting the inside of their mouths just to be a little darker than it was and then I don't know but I just found that all to be kind of weird moving on to the storytelling this had some slow moments but it wasn't really like the end of the world type of thing I I felt like it was a bit hard for me to get into the gist of the movie with the with the first act 
And once things started to pick up, once uh, Hero Boy was like on the train and the things and interacting with the other kids in the train and the conductor and just being in that environment, I felt the movie picked up once we actually got to the train. One thing that was kind of confusing to me was the hobo on the train and his significance. Like he was on top of the train. He was constantly coming and going and he would disappear by basically just becoming snow and i was like is this supposed to be like santa or is this a figment of his imagination but he's actually also helping him like i couldn't really understand what that character's purpose was in this whole thing a lot of things also happen because hero boy and sometimes hero girl and then later lonely boy couldn't just like chill out like they always kind of had to do something or like get someone or you know just like couldn't just like if they had sat down and just like hung out with the other kids this movie probably would have never happened but they always ended up getting into something that caused a a huge ripple effect like okay so there were like some accidents and things that were happening for instance there were like these men in the engine room and they were trying to slow down the train but the screw in this lever that they were you know that was jammed comes loose and then just like all hell breaks loose so you know what i'm saying like the parts are flying the train is like speeding going so fast like up and down some like mountains or something like that so the people in the the two guys in the engine room they're like falling all over the place they're trying to grab the screw one guy ends up swallowing it and like now what do we do and there's like scenarios like that that happened a lot like the hero boy sees that hero girl left her ticket on the seat and he tries to get her her ticket and he he goes out to the other train car and then now he's climbing up a ladder and he's on the roof of the train and that's where he sees the hobo guy and they're like oh we have to hurry and get you back down because there's this tunnel coming and it doesn't have enough space between the top of the train car and the, the tunnel and I'm just like why are all these like super time consuming moments just like kind of keep happening there's another scene when the three kids are at the north pole now and they're like in santa's workshop that i'm using that quote quote because it's more like it's a huge like warehouse factory type of deal not necessarily kind of sort of and so anywho so they're in like there's like this assembly line or what have you where they presents i guess come down these conveyor belts and they end up going or pursuing one present and that's not what they were supposed to do but that takes them on this like wild adventure which was actually a very beautiful like stimulating visual scene but it was also like why is all of this happening and then they end up in santa's bag of gifts that has to go on his sleigh and then it's so heavy now and then the christmas tree almost gets knocked over and it's like so much of the small actions that they do end up having such a like i said a ripple effect and a big impact on surrounding things and i'm just like wow we're spending all this time to showcase like all this stuff and maybe it's just so that the people <laughs> like the people that the director or what have you can get screen time for these things that were made i don't know <laughs> so this print this movie is like it's pretty it's pretty avoidable like i said if the kids had just did what they were supposed to do and calm down and chill out and a lot of this stuff wouldn't have happened as for like my final thoughts to be honest i don't really like this movie <laughs> i don't really like this movie and it's mainly because of the motion capture and the photorealistic character designs i just it's just such a turn off for me i feel like had this movie been more stylized in its approach it really could have propelled the film further because it's a decent story the story is like not bad at all it's just that like there's a just a disconnect from gravitating and caring for the characters because it just looks so strange and i just almost want this movie to be remade in some sort of like not a super disney pixar like frozen type of ordeal but again like well illumination you know despicable me they're kind of similar up there i feel like this could really be pushed character design wise so you can like get feel more connected to the characters and there's so much magic that does happen to this movie but it, it gets overshadowed with how real the characters are and how they're moving it's just so distracting i can't even always enjoy the magic of the movie so as far as i would watch it again i think watching this movie i this honestly is probably like my only second or third time seeing it in its entirety and i am over it <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't watch it again i might just take a nap if it's on again i'm completely fine on not seeing it again um i might read the book because i think it, it has some sort of something to do with the book as for presents oh my gosh 
I would give this two presents because it's the holidays. <laughs> I don't think it's it's really worthy of one present. I think one present would be a real hater move, hater thing to do, and that's not how I feel. But definitely two presents, you know, and I'm um, calling it a day. So, oh my gosh, today's next to the last day of Chris Mahana Kawanzaka. And you got a little bit of a lengthier episode. As usual, you can follow me on all social media platforms at Simply Robotics. Use the podcast hashtag Simply Robotics Pod. You can also go to the website, simplyrobotics.com. The links in the episode notes. If you want to send a voice note or if you want to contribute and support the podcast, you can do so. Tomorrow is the last day of doing this. And wow. I can say that I I enjoy the movie that we'll be talking about tomorrow. I can say that. So, until then, bye. Happy Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, 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 Kwanzaa.